Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're planting up a bunch of containers and two window boxes for fall. So I'm standing underneath our balcony. This area gets hardly any sun just at the very beginning of the day and it's in the shade for the rest of the day. We've got the two pots that flank our door and then the two window boxes. And then right out front here, We've got six containers. There are three on each side. We had these planted up for spring and summer and everything was still looking okay. We had some big coleus in here though that kind of got um, demolished a little bit in a super bad windstorm that we had. So it was time to clean them out and I've got some gorgeous things to work with. Uh, you can see the other grouping of containers right here. Now these out here do get more sun, even the ones that we just looked at that are in the shade now, we're late in the afternoon. So they get sun for most of the day and then in the late afternoon, evening, these start to receive a little bit more shade, but I plant these up usually for full sun. Um, you know, I'm using a lot of kind of typical fall plants here that you'll see everywhere, you know, pansies and mums, there's some marigolds there, but I do have some interesting things as well. I'm not even sure how these are gonna all come together in the containers, but I think they're all beautiful elements. So as some centerpiece plants, I've got baby blue eyes spruce right here. Isn't that so pretty? Now, I don't even know, this one gets 30 by 15. So I always like to plan fall containers to where I know they can kind of slide into winter. And if we've got evergreen centerpieces, we can toss some lights over these and then we're good to go for two full seasons, which is nice. And I can even leave them in here for spring or summer or whatever if I wanted to, but these I'm going to plant out in the new garden um, when I'm done with them next season. We've got a fern spray cypress here, which has got the most gorgeous architectural form. It's very, I think fern spray is a wonderful name for that one. Um, I've also got some of the echabechia, which are a rudbeckia echinacea cross. So they've got the Rudbeckia looking bloom with the Echinacea hardiness. And these are the same ones that I used in the wicker pots. I kind of wanted to incorporate some of the same elements. I've also got some oregano. This is called Kent Beauty. Isn't that the most beautiful thing? And these right here, like little blooms, are those blooms? Yeah. They dry really beautifully. They smell good and they're a beautiful accent plant. And then I also have this gold strike juniper, which is a kind of a, well, it's a ground cover type. So it's got this spilling effect. And I thought this would be a really different texture coming out the side of a container. Other than that, you know, ornamental peppers and then the other things I talked about. So I think what we're gonna do is just put all of these together and then I'll give you a tour in the end. day. I love how all the containers turned out, but we started this project yesterday afternoon at 3.20 p.m. and we only had somebody here to watch the kids till five. <laughs> About halfway through I was wondering why in the world we decided to start this project, but got it all done, got it all cleaned up. It was super windy last night, so I was like, please plants, hold on to where I can just show you guys and then it, you know, the wind can blow all at once. But I am super thrilled with how they all turned out. So something I forgot to show you in the pre-tour before I started in was that I had had boxwood topiary. These were the ones in our front pots, the black iron urns that lived up there for what, 
two years, three years. They've been up there for a while, but we had to pick them up and put them back by the greenhouse when we were doing the brick walkway and tearing out that whole area. So I brought the urns up here and I had to use a saw because the urns are shaped like this. So since the boxwoods had been in those pots for so long, the roots were filling that container. So I sawed them out of the container, trimmed them up just a little bit and used them right here, which I'm so happy that I'm able to. That's the nice thing about evergreens. If you can get ones that really thrive in containers and will last you several years, it's just, it's nice just to bump them around. And even in the same containers, I considered that just putting the iron urns right here. Um, but I'm happy with how these turned out. This is, the, this is the Twain container from Unique Stone and I love the way it looks on the Gothic risers. Aaron's phone's going off, hold on. <laughs> and then orange pansies. I just wanted it to be very simple and I wanted an element in each one of the containers that kind of like drew them together because I used a lot of different things. Window boxes, they're simple, but I think effective. I used three Skyrocket Penicetum right here, which are the um, annual grasses that you can plant in May and they look beautiful through the season. If you plant them in May, like by now they would be this big. Um, but I had these in little containers and I usually hold on to a few grasses if I can uh, in the greenhouse so I can use them in fall containers. But oftentimes you can find uh, annual grasses like this to use. But I love the seed heads, it, very much so like a wheat fall vibe. And then this is a oh, pigeon red, I think, cabbage. Right here I used six of those. I've got some marigolds in here, which marigolds are pretty frost sensitive, but because they're underneath here, I use some in the front containers as well, but it's all a pretty protected side of the house. I think they'll last for quite a while. And then again, some more orange pansies. And then I did tuck one of the ornamental oregano right in the center here because I had them left over after I got done with the front containers. I did uh, swap my pillows out too, which Russell, like I swear he knows. He knows like, oh, there's some new, some fresh blood out there. I'm gonna go get my hair on it. Um, so I've got some pumpkin. I got this at Marshall's. This one I got at Joann's. Um, anyway, it's kind of fun to have some fall stuff. I'm not done up here yet. I've got the uh, wheat wreaths going which need a little bit of repair at this point because I, they think they've been knocked into a couple times. And then I wanna do my uh, fall garland up on top of the molding there like I do the past couple or have done the past couple of years. Okay, so let me show you the grouping of containers that's in the shade. You can see that one. Again, we're in the afternoon, so that one's still in the sun. This one is in the shade. I really like how they turned out. Like they're all very different but very fall. So let's start with the first one that I planted. We've got the fern spray cypress as our centerpiece plant here. Really like the texture of this one. I've got an ornamental pepper in here. I use, and these will, well, you can see. When they're brand new, they're kind of this yellow color, then they age to orange and then they will turn a red. And then we've got marigolds here, white pansies, and that's pretty much it. In this one here, we've got the baby blue spruce and the icy blue is a really nice color. And I like the size. I wondered about it before I put them in. I wondered if it would be a graduated enough step down, and I think it is. Then we've got another cabbage that mirrors what's in the window boxes back there. Here is the trailing juniper, or the ground cover juniper rather, a bronze mum, white pansy, marigold, and there's an orange pansy back around the back side. And then in this container, I ended up using two Ecobecchias per container to give it a very full look. Plus, these are always a little bit more of a challenge to design for me because they're longer rather, I don't know, it's just harder to get it to be balanced, I guess. So I used two, three pigeon white cabbage, two of the gorgeous oregano. I love this combination. And then in the back, I just tucked some white pansies. You can't really see them unless you're back behind which you can't, I mean, we walk from back there, so I wanted there to still be some interest, but keep it simple, and the pansies don't mind all the shade. So, same exact combination right over here. So we can just take a look quick. These all, oh, I did tuck some celosia around the back side of the fern spray cypress. You can see it here, just for a little bit of a different texture. And I'm putting these elsewhere in our garden too. I've got some of each one of these left to use. I'm just loving kind of making sure everything kind of jives in a way um, all the way through our property. So anyway, that's it. <laughs> that's it, there's eight, how many containers? 10, 10 containers. That was kind of a big project. I made a huge mess up here. It was kind of satisfying to come through with the blower and take care of that. Um, so we will be doing the, 
garland. And then I think what I'm gonna do this year, instead of like a full harvest video of our pumpkins and squash, I think I'm gonna do it in a couple different shifts because I have stuff that's ready out there. And I don't want it to just sit out there and not, I can't see it. <laughs> like we can't enjoy what it looks like when it's underneath all the leaf canopy of all the vines. So I thought it'd be fun to go out and just at least pick what's ready now and start using that up here and the corn stalks as well. And then we'll go in later and get the rest of them as they start to ripen. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, just seeing some different kinds of centerpieces, different combinations of plants. It always takes on a little bit of a different look every year and it's just so much fun. And Aaron told me last night that he always enjoys when we start doing fall planters because it just means we're gonna have some really cool, beautiful days and things just thrive better without needing so much maintenance and water from us. It's just a really nice break for us and while the garden's still going uh, before winter. So anyway, thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.